Hey everyone, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so if my voice is a little raw, that's why, so please forgive me. But today I would love to review the new L'Oreal Infallible Shadows, and there's six new colors, and I believe they're limited edition, so did lots and lots of duping and comparisons for you guys, but let's talk about the formula. In case you've never um, tried the Infallible Formula by L'Oreal, by the way, this is what they look like. Let me give you some notes about how they're supposed to look and feel, etc. before I really get into the shades. Uh, first of all, they come in these little tubs. Uh, they have almost a false bottom. Your product lies within this region right here, this little visible region you can see. Inside there's a little cap where you press down the actual product and you must not discard this. Now the actual product is slightly moist and you push it down to keep it compressed and packed. So it's kind of like a pressed pigment, but it does have that moisture. Now, these, this product delivers on mostly every promise it gives. It's not 24 hour wear, obviously, because who's really testing that? I mean, I've fallen asleep in these and I woke up and they're a little faded, but I wouldn't say that they have full 24 hour wear, but you're gonna get a whole day's wear of these products. And because they're slightly moist, you can opt to use a primer or not use a primer. If you're not using a primer, Primer, push down on your eyelid when you apply and use a dense brush. If you aren't using a primer, then you can use a little bit fluffier brush, but don't use a fluffy, fluffy brush. You just don't need to use a super dense brush. By dense, you know the Urban Decay brush that uh, comes with the Naked Palettes, that flat um, brush that has very dense bristles together. You can use a brush like that to press it onto your lid. Or you can use a brush that's just slightly fluffier than that, maybe like the e.l.f. eyeshadow brush, like the C brush. You can use something like that, if you understand what I'm saying. Or if you're using a MAC brush, I don't really know about MAC brushes, but just don't use anything too fluffy because this product is slightly moist and you want to, you don't want to have a lot of fallout. Um, what I love about the range is that they have a slight shimmer in them. Well, this these do, but some are matte, some are shimmer. They have all different finishes. Now, this collection itself, we have six colors, and I could tell you right now from all, I have the entire collection. I have every one of them that they've ever released, and some Canadian ones. So I have, let's start with um, Always Pearly Pink. Now I have duped these, well not duped them, but I have done comparisons on the other shades and I'm going to show you why these shades are not like the other ones they've ever released. So Always Pearly Pink is pretty much just that, a pearly pink. There you go. And when I swatched this up, I really loved how girly and frosty it is. It kind of reminded me of the really early 90s. My mom had a Christmas tree that she used to decorate with like pink Christmas balls and pink ribbon and pearls. Think if Molly Ringwald was at Christmas tree. That's what my early 90s Christmases were like. And it reminds me of that. It totally reminds me of a Molly Ringwald, <laughs> Molly whatever color. It reminds me of her. So I like that. And the whole frost is back. Um, now I'm going to compare it to Strawberry Blonde, which was released in the summer. This was a limited edition collect um, color. Part of the limited edition collection, Miss Candy. And at first glance, it looks pretty similar. The only difference is the um, this one has a lot more opalescent in it. As you can see, this one's a pearl. This is more opalescent, iridescent. So different in terms of their finish, therefore not a dupe. So I couldn't find another dupe for it. I couldn't find another similar shade. So you, if you like frosty, pearly pinks, pick up always pearly pink. And that's number 756. Now the next shade that they have out is a purple, and this is number 758, by the way I'm doing this in no particular order, <laughs> I hope nobody minds. Um, and this one is Purple Priority, and at first glance I was like, this really, really reminds me of Perpetual Violet, right? But they're not the same. Um, purple Priority is a little bit more blue, a little bit darker. And I'm going to show you. It's a little bit more blue. Like when you first look at it, you can kind of see that more. it's more indigo. So let's watch this up. But it's definitely a really deep purple, and it does have that nice reflection of purple. But like I said, it, it's, it really reminds me more blue. And then we have Perpetual Purple, which is the one from the permanent range. That's the print. You can see that's that's much more purple. And... There you go. Can you see it now? You see the difference between the two? This one leans much more blue than this one. This one leans a little bit slightly red. 
So again, not a dupe, but similar finish. They definitely have a similar type of finish. The next one I'm going to do is the um, 760 Timeless Blue Spark. Now, at first glance, I thought that maybe this might be similar to Endless Sea, but Endless Sea is definitely more teal, so I didn't bother swatching comparison with that. So I'm going to compare it to Midnight Blue, which is in the permanent range. So here we go. This is the limited edition one. And let's watch that right there. So as you can see when it swatches, it's slightly darker, but it does have that light, lighter reflection of that lighter blue. And then in comparison, we have Midnight Blue. And this is definitely more darker in the actual pan itself. And when swatched, it's much more midnight. So again, no dupe for that one. Not even close. Not even like the pink ones where it was kind of close. No, not even close. So there's absolutely no comparison for that one. The next one we have is Gilded Envy. And I thought that this one would be easy to dupe too. And I pulled out a whole bunch of greens and browns. Ugh, and dust. <laughs> I pulled out a whole bunch of greens and browns and tried to find an acceptable dupe. But none of them actually compared at all. And um, I'm just going to show you a picture swatch of that. Because I sat here and I just watched them all. None of them were even close. They either were way too green or way too brown. Or they leaned to bronze or gold. Just none of them compared. It's like a sagey green, but even the green sage shade just didn't compare. So, um, look at the picture swatches for the comparison shades for that one. Because just none of them were close. But I'll, I'll show you the packaging really quickly. So this one is Gilded Envy. This is Gilded Envy compared to the Canadian Permanent Khaki. Permanent Khaki is more green. Compared to Bronze Taupe in the Permanent American Collection, more brown. Compared to Golden Sage in the Permanent Collection, more green. Compared to 480 Gleaming Bronze in the American Collection, I think this was limited edition last year, um, more gold. So none of them match up. Oh, and one more, um, Gold and Emerald, more green. So none of them were similar to this one. The next one we have is Bust, Burst Into Bloom. And at first glance, I thought that this was similar to either Glistening Garnet or uh, with a twist from the spring collection, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to do swatches and show you how they're not the same. Again, I couldn't dupe this one either. So this is Burst Into Bloom, and it's kind of like a purpley pink. It's going to be really pretty for the spring, I think. It's going to be a pretty spring shade. And it has a little bit of that micro shimmer, that silver micro shimmer. So, um, compared to the permanent line Glistening Garnet, Glistening Garnet is way more pink. It's way, way more pink. And then from the limited edition collection, uh, Miss Candy, the, um, what you call it, with the twist, is actually a little bit more purple. A little bit more purple. So that one didn't match up either. See? But I think a lot of these, if you combine them, you can get these shades. But um, neither one of the shades had that silver sparkle that's included in the new one. And last but not least, we have, and I thought this would be the easiest to dupe, and it actually really wasn't. Uh, the next one we have is Silver Sky 757. And uh, this one is a really true silver. I thought the other ones might be true silvers, but I was completely wrong. Um, I'm going to be comparing it to um, Primped and Precious from last year's um, holiday collection, more gray. Um, also the Canadian Silver, Flashback Silver, more gray. And then I'm also going to be comparing it to Liquid Diamond, more gray. So this is more silver, this is more bright. I'm going to do it on this hand. And now this one really was really pretty when I swatched it. Really shimmery, really frosty, almost glittery. I was really impressed with this one. Isn't that gorgeous? Really light catching, especially if you like products that are really shiny and frosty. This one again reminds me of the 80s. This one in the pink one, again, that's my Christmas tree all over again. It's my childhood Christmas tree. <laughs> so um, compared to Flashback Silver, which is the Canadian um, color, this is more gray. Where's the swatch? There we go. More gray. 
actually has a little bit of purple in it, I feel, or blue. It has some sort of iridescent in it. I can't put my finger on it right now. Um, compared with the American Liquid Diamond, part of the permanent collection, I believe Liquid Diamond is. Liquid Diamond is more gray. Definitely more gray. It doesn't even feel that dark, and only in comparison does it seem so much darker. And then last but not least from the um, holiday collection last year, Primmed and Precious. This is that silver from the American collection. More gray. Um, put it right down here. More gray silver. So as you can see, the, the, the new one is white silver. Really a true, true white silver. Like white shimmer. So if you were looking for that, you finally found it. So, um, you can find these now in drugstores. If you're a collector like me, you probably don't even care about the dupes, but I just want to make sure that you know, um, that you probably don't have anything else like this in your collection, especially if you've been collecting the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Shadows. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I haven't done any looks yet, so, um, keep an eye on my Instagram for that. I'm Recycled Stardust, and thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the picture swatches.